Nice to see you all. Happy Tuesday afternoon. My name's Eric Singer, and uh, Marty knows I've been around here for uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, I want to make a, a an important personal announcement before I start talking to you about cancer. For those of you attending Marty's dinner or not attending Marty's dinner, my wife of 49 years is having an art opening tonight at uh, a, a private gallery at 255 East 74th Street, it's Suite 12A. You're all invited after the dinner or or whenever. She's uh, uh, she's a much better painter than I am at any of the things I do. So with that out of the way, uh, and and you can look her you can look up her uh, her name is Ayat Paro A E T P A A R O, and she has a website ayatparo.com if you want to get a sense of what that work is like. So I want to thank you all, and I'm done. What time is it? It, uh, 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 from six to nine thirty. Um, you want me to repeat that? I can repeat that. It's two five five. No, no, no. Her, her website. AET is her first name. She's never met anybody with her name. AET P A A R O. I've tried to persuade her to change her last name to P A R R O so she could pass for a Latino, but she won't do it. Um, okay, so uh, with, with that, so Marty knows me. I, I, I started talking about a company called Neotex in 2016. We put together a, a company where we wanted to um, uh, find a, um, a, a cancer drug that had been mistested and failed that we could fix. And after searching through, a and we put together a team that consisted of uh, Asher Nathan, who's a CEO, Marcel Rosenzweig, who had worked with, uh, uh, can, can you say something from out there? Marcel Rosenzweig, who, thank you. Um, Marcel Rosenzweig, who was the uh, former head of oncology at Bristol Myers and widely known as the godfather of chemotherapy, he, at, at Bristol Myers he conducted 21 oncology trials, 20 of which were successful, and Roger Kornberg, a Nobel Prize winner. Um, we, found a, we found a drug from a company called Active Biotech. That company um, had spent $230 million developing a drug that uh, makes cancer uh, think that the body is under a bacterial attack. We take a fragment of the Staphylococcus bacteria, we use a piece of Velcro to put it on the surface of tumors, and we get a much bigger immune response from the body doing that. Uh, as a result, we have, um, uh, th there was a problem with the drug. It was difficult to dose people multiple times because we had anti-drug antibody activity. We fixed that. We found a way to fix that, and we've uh, we had a, a successful phase one trial where we proved that uh, that we could dose people up to six times. This drug makes the main forms of fighting cancer with with therapeutics all work better. It makes chemo work better. It makes checkpoint inhibitor work better. It makes uh, CAR T work better. Uh, in the audience, I know we have a lot of laymen. Is yeah. there a particular uh, specific type of cancer you fight? No, it's all, all, almost all solid tumors. So we're in, we're halfway through a phase two in, in chemotherapy for patients that have failed with chemo and failed with checkpoint, uh, uh, so they can use our drug in chemo. We're getting a 20 to 25 percent response rate. Uh, there's not a lot of accurate data on that population of patients that have uh, are refractory to two different uh, ways of, of being treated. We, uh, and we're actively uh, working on getting that data, but we think that that drug has a reasonable shot of, of getting approval. Checkpoint inhibitor, for those of you who don't know what it is, is uh, 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 when, when a, the T cells are the cops of the body, they land on tumors all the time. They look at the garbage disposal of tumors, and if they find a bad protein in the garbage disposal, the cops of the body issue a kill shot into the cancer cell. The cancer hides by giving the cops a secret handshake when it shows up. Checkpoint inhibitor puts gloves on so there's no secret handshake. Uh, we have a way to test that drug on both patients that are uh, have received checkpoint already and patients that, are, that have never received checkpoint. Our new CMO, who's been with the company about a year, is a guy who had his choice of working for any 
of the major pharmas in the world. He's a top five worldwide oncologist. His uh, clinical oncologist, his name is Scott Fields. He took a 75% cut in pay in salary to come work for us. He's widely considered uh, uh, one of the best in the industry. He has said that he thinks a chance of our drug working with a checkpoint inhibitor to get to an approval is over 50%. Uh, the other thing that our drug does is if you use it with CAR T, CAR T is science fiction. They take, uh, you have 40 trillion cells in your body, 80 billion of them are T cells or cops of the body. With CAR T, they extract 10 million T cells, they isolate 10,000 that know how to look for one specific molecule, and then they clone those back up into 10 million and send them into the body. Works great on, on blood related tumors, does not work at all on, on, on solid tumors. We have we believe that our drug makes CAR T work on solid tumors, and we have mouse evidence that shows that. Um, on on the three things that I've just mentioned very quickly, if we wind up with a second, if our phase two leads to having a second line drug in, in lung cancer, that's a five to ten billion dollar exit. If we if we wind up with a successful uh, checkpoint inhibitor uh, phase two trial, that right there is a one to three billion dollar exit. On CAR-T, we think we only need to put 10 to 20 patients in a trial. If we have any evidence at all that we make CAR-T work on solid tumors in humans, that right there is, is, is a one to $3 billion exit. AstraZeneca is our partner for providing checkpoint inhibitor to us. They used to say to us, gee, let us know what's going on with your planned esophageal trial once, once every six months. Uh, uh, AstraZeneca called up last week and said, no, 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 that, that's, that's not good anymore. You have to let us know what's going on uh, every month, and we, we may want to increase the frequency of that uh, every two weeks. They, they are anxious for that trial to get underway. It would, it would give them their number three or four in the checkpoint inhibitor space. It would give them a huge leg up. So, the, so those are three ways that the, the – Marty told me that the most difficult thing I could do was raise money for a molecule in this biotech market. It has proved to be very difficult, but believe it or not, Marty often knows what he's talking about. Um, that, that's one branch of the company. The other branch of the company is that because we were involved with a Nobel Prize winner, uh, we were able to acquire from Larry Ellison a company that was founded by three Nobel laureates. One of them was Michael Levitt. Michael Levitt had a dream going back uh, 35 years of let's design molecules on the computer. And he, was, and he set out to do it using the fundamental, the 47 fundamental equations of quantum mechanics. There are half a dozen large public companies that claim to use AI to design, uh, to help uh, drug companies design molecules. If Bristol Myers wants to go after a specific target in the body, uh, they will turn to Schrodinger and they'll say, Get, uh, here's the way the target looks. It, it, look, it looks like this. Please give us 10 molecules that you think might fit that target, okay? So Schrodinger will come up with 10 molecules, but it does it primarily based on shape, okay? They have a library of 4 billion compounds sorted by shape. With our approach, using the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics, we understand the electrical charges surrounding that, the proposed molecules. So we can, we can predict in advance the affinity much tighter than, than Schrodinger can or anybody else uh, as, to, as to the electrical charges. Uh, we even understand the polarity of, 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 of the, those molecules in water. We su successfully, about six months ago, um, we had a major breakthrough, and I'm, I'm going to frame it in the context of the Human Genome Project. Uh, the Human Genome Project in 1990 set out to map a single person's DNA. It took them 13 years and a billion dollars to find the, the sequencing of one person's DNA. Today, if you're in trouble and you go to the, you go to the hospital, uh, you can get, uh, uh, it takes four weeks and 400 bucks to have somebody map your DNA now. It's a commodity item. Uh, we successfully simulated a, uh, a 200,000 atom molecule and we, it took us 10 years to do it. It's completely accurate. And now we think we can, the next one, which we're gonna use for a KRAS drug, we think we can do in six months. Uh, the, there is, 
um, Tim Draper spoke here a, 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 few, a, a year, a year and a half ago, and he said he only likes to look at $10, $10 trillion ideas. There is a $10 trillion idea buried in this, okay? This is equivalent to somebody coming into a room and talking to you about, I have the ability to search whether the words uh, Timbuktu and, and, and revelry ever, ever appeared in the first sentence. That was the genesis of Google. What this can do, what this model can do over the next 10 years is it can go and do an audit of how tightly uh, every single one of the drugs that we take is binds to its intended target. There are 20,000 drugs that we take, okay? All of them over time are gonna be su subjected to an audit of how uh, uh, tightly they bind and gives the opportunity to come up with, with a vast array of improvements. So I, I see this properly handled as the biggest idea I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be affiliated with in my lifetime. I didn't have the idea, I'm just a banker been able to raise $86 million for these guys. Our board has uh, uh, Tom Hill, who's a co-founder of Blackstone is in it. Uh, we've, and uh, we've, we recently uh, kind of sat down and, and did an internal review of the mili potential military applications. We came up with 14 military applications for this. We did something that sounds like it's a trivial thing to do. If you take a, if you take a, a tablespoon of salt and you put it into a quart of water, uh, uh, let's predict in advance how much energy would be released. Okay, sounds like a simple thing to do. We're the only ones that can do it. We did it for sugar. We've done it for lithium and in, in, in ethylene in ethylene carbonate. Uh, we have a party that's interested in using our simulating techniques to find the best electrolyte for 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 batteries. So uh, so I think. Uh, putting it all together, uh, we have uh, half a dozen uh, uh, large families in the data room. A couple, of, we've had some verbal yeses on a deal. Uh, just this morning, I was looking for some bridge capital to buy some time while we close this deal. Uh, we got a bridge capital commitment this morning, uh, which, uh, if, if you're interested in learning more about that, I'm happy to talk to anybody about that as well if they want to tie onto the bridge. The economics of the bridge are uh, uh, come, that you can come into, uh, put up money for a year, you get 12%. Uh, it's it's the only debt on the company. It's not secured, but it's the only debt on the company. Is there a discount to the next round? And there's a 15% discount to the next round. And that's it. It's just, it's a plain vanilla, a very plain vanilla deal. But it, if you think if you think that you're interested in the next round, this is a very, uh, uh, the, the economically favorable way to do in, in, invest in the next two, round. Two minutes left. Um, we have a couple of deals going on where we're looking at, for obviously uh, to get the non diluted capital from the NIH and others. You also, you may be familiar if you haven't, not going to make uh, connections. So if you have any connection to Texas, they have a $6 billion fund called Secret that you may be familiar with. I'm not. It's good non diluted money. So uh, also, with Tedco, which is the Investment arm of the state of Maryland will work with them. Why don't you and I have a, an offline yeah, conversation about this? I, I, I'd love to talk with you further. Who's that? Norm Okay. Yeah, Norm Norm does uh, non buckets. Right? No. Norm Okay. Um, and he does the mission mission capital where the mission and he gets the money from foundation and stuff. So okay. Well, this is this is. Uh, well, Ellison's involved right now. Tom Hill's involved. Stu Sabotnik, who was the number two guy at Metro Media, is in there. David Walentis, who was uh, uh, a real estate developer who uh, uh, bought uh, two million square feet of Dumbo at, a, at, at 12 bucks a foot. It's now worth a thousand bucks a foot. Uh, is in so we have some some heavy guys that are in in terms of their financial capability. We have a VC out of Korea that's involved called NDFOS. Hank Greenberg uh, of a star, uh, the Star Foundation has invested. They you know the, these were guys that invested early and after excruciating due diligence. I mean like a year and a half of due diligence. So it was. Uh, uh, our and and we public we published articles in Nature about what we're doing and and uh, have extensive extensive scientists. I've never been in a, I've been in a lot of science meetings. 
I've, I've yet to have a, a, a science meeting where somebody says, aha, I got you, your, your, your idea is, is flawed. Uh, this has stood up to a lot of scrutiny. It, we just had the misfortune of coming to the market at a time where even Marty thinks that the biotech industry so is, is in difficult. Is no, no, I, 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 CV Star actually was our, we had on the same day we had a conversation with a VC who wanted to uh, get, get us down to nothing and CV Star came in at, at that time at, in, in our first round at a $17 million valuation. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, CV Star, they, they have, a, it's the CV Star Foundation, they have a notional limit of $15 million, but in the case of our deal, they put in $20 million. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so high quality investors, fantastic upside, and the company is moving to a, a more of a Royvant model, uh, so that uh, you have a portfolio of investments. And you're, and it's not as binary as a single molecule. Does a single molecule blow up on you? So that's uh, um, uh, 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 basically I am a cancer slut. I will talk to anybody about this. At Only any cancer uh, uh, for for now. And, you know, once the, once the deal, we're going to evaluate options once the deal's over. But uh, uh, so so uh, that that's that. That's the story. I, 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 I welcome many, many is, is, uh, pharmaceutical companies and others have been very reluctant to use AI technologies. Today we've had a lot of discussions about AI. With uh, let, 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 me, let me address. Now, if you can add that. Uh, uh, one I, minute. We're one up on AI, okay? You can call what we do AI, but we're one up on it. What's the problem with AI for drug discovery, which is where we're one up? The problem for drug discovery is that AI requires a training set to understand what it's doing, okay? If you play blackjack three times in front of AI, AI could conclude, oh, 17 is good enough to win. It, uh, we, we estimate that the, that the majors are, uh, that their training sets for AI are too small by a factor of 10 million. With the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics, it, it either is right or it's not right. So we're, we would distinguish ourselves from AI in, in, in that area. Uh, 